Alrighty. <clears throat> Here for the first round of these eight mans. <clears throat> Sounds okay. Hopefully this trainer mail finds an N or a Sycamore here on the draw. Hopefully we don't get item locked on turn one. Jirachi and Tyranitar. Hammer and this is 10 more. To, this is 10 damage each of your bench Pokemon. There must be a Tyranit an M Tyranitar that's worth playing because that card's not very good. This Pokemon, this Pokemon attaching can't be affected by special conditions. Hey, Hawk. Good evening. Whip, search your deck for a card and put it into your hand, shuffle afterwards. All right, drawing an energy is actually not bad there. Uh, I'm going to lead on trainer mail and see what we find. Sycamore is exactly what we wanted, so let's go ahead and Ultra Ball, discarding, could potentially knock this out this first turn. Yeah, it's Ultra Ball discarding these two. If this uh, if this elixir hits, we can probably knock knock this Jirachi out here. Hey, look at that! The elixir hit. Oh, the escape rope's gonna switch his guy too, though. That's a little awkward. I am playing one of the Venus Arteries. Peace Tinker with the five hundred cheer. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it, bud. So Dark Patch gets to put that on there, and then do I want to escape rope to here? I feel like I do. Yeah, I'm just going to escape rope. Just start attacking this turn. We can deal large amounts of damage if we hit like elixirs on double dragon energy. And then we've got the Sycamore in my discard pile, so let's go ahead and Verse Seeker for Sycamore, and then draw seven more cards here. Uh, let's go ahead and put Salamance out here, and put <laughs> Giratina out here. Um, they haven't played a lot of EX Pokemon yet. I think I'm still... Peace Tinker! With the Twitch Prime subscription as well. Thank you, friend. I appreciate, I appreciate the support. Uh, so I, I need to put this double dragon on someone, I think. What's the name of this deck? This is, uh, Dark Ray Dragons, I've been calling it. Or Dark Tina, because he plays Giratina is what it's also been called. I think I want to set up the Giratina here, because I think they're playing this Tyranitar card, because there's a Mega Tyranitar that's worth playing. You'll need to refresh your chat, Peace Sneaker, to get the, to get the emotes. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and Shaman here for three cards... This might be a little aggressive. Maybe I should wait on this. Because it's possible we just get, like, End or something next turn. And, like, these Dark Patches are, like, good, but I don't actually have Dark Energies in my discard pile for them, so. And, like, putting the Shaman out here on my bench is a little bit awkward against the deck with Yevidal in it, because this does 60 damage to my active and one of my bench Pokemon. Rocky Helmet. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is damaged by an attack, put two counters on the attacking Pokemon. And I put a Yevidal Break on here. Put as many cards from your hand as you, as you like on the bottom of your deck, and then draw. That doesn't seem very good. Huh. Well, I'm really confused as to why they did that. Um, huh. <clears throat> so I could end here, but I don't really want to give them a bunch of cards in their hand. So I, I think I'm actually just going to knock his guy out here. I'm just going to hit for 80 again, which does 20 to my guy and gives me a prize. Yeah, I'm just not... And I don't... I have a Professor Sycamore here in my discard pile, but I really don't want to Sycamore and discard two Dark Patches and my other Dark Ray EX, so... Hey, Drew Dodruid, good evening. There you go. <clears throat> so they've got... If anyone else plays Pokemon TCG Online that's watching, um, they've got special... Special events going on. I am playing tomorrow, Druda. The weather looks good, and Matt and I are driving up together. I've actually got my I spare decked Esper Control, so I've got there's a 
ruined Halo on top there as my opponent concedes. All right, yep, glad glad I didn't end. I think one of the things people do a lot in this game is end too aggressively. Like, ending, ending is a very real cost, especially because, like, putting, giving my opponent, like, two to six cards is insane. All right, a lot of the time these rounds go, these rounds go pretty quick. <laughs> The Pokemon games aren't aren't super long when there's no there's no shuffling involved. So I was gonna say if you're play play Pokemon right now, um, the expanded tournaments for eight tickets are giving extra extra prizes right now. So, for instance, for winning winning those two that that just this first game here, I get two random booster packs for my eight tickets, and then second place is two evolutions plus two random booster packs, and then first place is two evolutions, two randoms, and a special deck box and sleeves. <laughs> There's also a higher stakes one that's 24 tickets to enter, but I didn't want to enter that, but maybe I should have. <laughs> Let me get probably get a little bit stiffer competition and people that don't want to scoop when you're in there. <laughs> Just playing Jund. Sideboarding in a format like Modern is really hard because you just like it's impossible to predict what you're going to be playing against. <laughs> like there's just a lot of a lot of different things that could happen at any given any given time. <laughs> it gives twenty packs. I thought it was eighteen packs, but it could be twenty. I thought it was nine and nine. 10, 10. No, it says 10 and 10 in your thing. I think the actual awards say 9 and 9, though. <laughs> hmm. This could be... Oh, I can do other things while this is going on, right? Yeah, look at that. There's the timer there. So the deck we're playing right now is an expanded version of... Well, this this weekend is special. a special... Um, a special events. These events that fire the eight mans normally give out less prizes than this. So this is the expanded version of the standard deck I've been playing. Uh, there, there's kind of there, there's a expanded dark ray deck that plays the dark ray ex that stacks up dark energies using max elixirs and dark patch is the card we gain in expanded. It takes a dark energy from our discard pile and attaches it to one of our bench Pokemon. But a lot of the people in expanded aren't playing the dragon package. And I think the Dragon Package is really very powerful and reasonable. Salamance is a beast right now. It does 50 more for each EX Pokemon your opponent has. So this card's, like, regularly for, like, three energies, which when we have a double Dragon energy, it's, like, you know, only two energies or an energy and an elixir. Um, is regularly hitting for, like, 160 or even 200 plus because your opponents are just, like, hoopaing and shamaning and, like, playing other EX Pokemon, so it just gets lots of damage very quickly. Hydreon... His, his text here, where he gives your other dragon Pokemon a reduced retreat cost, isn't super relevant, but his shred attack um, isn't affected by effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, so that allows you to attack through things like Jolteon and Regice and Carbink, which is really nice. And with a Fighting Fury belt on this Hydreon, he one-shots a Carbink, which is beautiful. He also has 180 hit points, just a really, really heavy tank, which is nice. Giratina has slightly less hit points, but it doesn't take damage from Mega Evolutions, which is really good utility. And then its Chaos Wheel actually comes up a little bit too. It hits for 100, and then makes your opponent not be able to play tools, special energies, or stadiums on their following turn. So kind of a, a lock-ish card. And then we're playing one copy of this other Dark Ray EX, which says any of your Pokemon that have Dark Energy on them get no retreat cost. And then one thing I'm trying that I'm not 100% sure of is I'm not playing any copies of Hoopa in this deck. Um, I've also trimmed Hoopa from my standard configuration because I just really wasn't happy with, like, gumming up my bench. And especially in standard, I think more people are going to figure out that Salamance is good in decks that have Dragon Energies and Fire Energies. So, like, having a bunch of EXs is not free. <laughs> right, waiting here. Looks like one of the other matches finished here. I'm just going to sign on and play a couple of these. I figured I might as well stream it. <laughs> Hope everyone's having a good evening. <laughs> I 
Anyone have any exciting weekend plans? I'm traveling to Chicago to play a Magic tournament tomorrow, so that should be that should be fun. This is a standard version of the deck, so it might, this might confuse people to show this. But this is this is similar, and I'm unsure on the specifics in this build right now. So this build is playing copies of Skyla in it because the standard version doesn't have access to something like Dark Patch, so Skyla gives us more copies of Max Elixir as virtual copies, basically. And then again, I trimmed the Hoopa. I've only got one Shaman in this configuration, which might be wrong. What tournament I'm going to? Uh, Nerd Rage Gaming has a uh, modern 1K tomorrow up in Northbrook, northwest Chicago suburb. <laughs> How expensive is Pokemon Online? Uh, it depends on what your definition of expensive is. This is the most expensive chase card in the game because most of the decks play some copies of it because its setup ability is very good and useful in every deck. And um, I think this one's about 15 ish dollars on, on Pokemon TCGO. Most of the other cards are much cheaper than that. I think the most I've paid for a card outside of Shaman is Ho Oh, which is six. I guess computer searches, computer searches ten bucks, but you only play one of those. You only play that and expanded. But like, you pro most decks in here are probably less than hundred dollars to buy outright. You can also Pokemon TCGO has a really awesome free to play model where um, they have a tournament mode where you can only play theme decks card for card, no modifications. So basically you can build these pre-con decks with the coins that you earn just by doing this stuff and then use those pre-con decks against other pre-con decks to grind your way up into cards. And if you look like, if we look at my collection here, or my buddy's collection, you can see, actually Shaman's a perfect card because I bought some of these and I've opened some of these. You can see the Shaman here has a three and a two down here. So I have five shamans and two of them are trade locked. So I can't trade them and three of them are tradable. <laughs> so I've opened two of these from non-tradable packs. When you go to the shop here, you earn these coins while you're playing the game. And these coins can be used to buy booster packs and other things. And the booster packs you buy with the free coins that you earn are locked to your account. And the cards that are in them are locked to your account. So I really, I really like the system because it allows them to have tradable currency as well as still being generous with the free-to-play aspect of the game. It's a little bit more true in this game, JDAGs, because the staples in Pokemon have more overlap between decks than they do in games like Magic and Hex. Like, the like the the, the, the supporters and the trainers just feel like, oh, every deck basically plays four Ultra Ball almost, and most decks play some trainer males, and, you know, most decks play Professor Sycamore. Pentachills with the seven-month resub. Welcome back, friend. I appreciate the continued support, bud. Yep, yeah, like I have um, I have a bunch of decks online, but in paper I bought one standard and one expanded deck, and now I'm up to three standard decks because, like Hawk said, it was only like 30-ish dollars to build another standard deck once I already had one built. Three of the four matches are done, so we're just waiting on the winner of Stickhead and Vonger here. They have at most 11 minutes, but usually it's a lot less than that, in my experience playing these. <laughs> yeah, the, the overlap between decks is, is high, for sure. Which is, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing by any means. <laughs> like these cards, like they just add consistency to all of the decks, which is very nice. Like when I first heard Pokemon TCG described, like the fact that you can't mulligan. You so the fact that you can't mulligan except when you don't have a base in your hand, I was like, oh, that sucks. It's probably super high variance and frustrating. But like the fact that all of these decks play like trainers, males, and sycamores and ends, you just see so many cards every game and ultra ball that it, uh, you just it's the consistency is just stunning. This is I, I'm I'm pretty confident to say at this point, like I've spent enough hours playing online and some in paper that this is probably the lowest variance of all the TCGs I play on the regular.
Standard is likely to change soon. I don't, so I've been looking at the Sun and Moon spoiler and like I'm still new to Pokemon and like evaluating the power level of cards, but while some of like the trainers and things seem like they're reasonable, I don't think a lot of the Pokemon are going to be all that impactful. Some of the GX moves are really powerful, but the GX Pokemon, unlike these EX Pokemon, you actually have to evolve the GX Pokemon if they're a stage one or stage two. So like those things are slow to set up and they don't hit for a lot. They just have high hit points. So like as long as the EX Pokemon are around, it's going to be tough to... I think really make for the GX Pokemon to make an impact on the standard format. Except for like maybe some of the better GX basics. Yeah, I'm really interested in, um, we don't have the Sun and Moon cards in here yet, do we? That's, I don't think they are. There's a new professor. Yeah, oh, sweet, they are. So this card, actually, um, Professor Kukai, uh, I, I just said that completely wrong. Surprise Ninja Boy GX attack. I, Ninja Boy only does basics, right? I'm going to come back to that card in a second. Yeah, Ninja Boy. Choose a basic, search your deck for a basic, and switch it with that Pokemon. Yeah, so this, I actually, I could filter for just Sun and Moon cards later, and we can kind of look at them. But I know this, this card is one that jumped out at me as something I wanted to play. This, uh, so this card, it draws two cards, and then during your turn, your your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more to your opponent's active Pokemon. I think this is a card I want to play at least in my standard Dark Ray deck, because um, if for starters, any deck that was like, wanted Kukui, 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 I'm just going to call him Kuki. Professor Kuki here, he's Kuki. So Professor Kuki, I think this is going to be an upgrade to a lot of the decks that play Giovanni Scheme. Scheme, on average, probably only drew two to three cards, and it, and it only did one or the other. It drew cards or added damage. So, like, this card drawing two cards and adding damage is huge. <laughs> yeah, but, like, that's not the GX Pokemon being good. Like, that's that's a powerful basic Pokemon being good. And I said the, the basic GX Pokemons might make an impact on the game, but the non-basic, like, Stage 1 and Stage 2 GX Pokemon are most of the better ones, and those don't seem particularly great. Feels like a more consistent Giovanni scheme. Yeah, I just think, like, a lot of the decks that want to just hit for that little that little bit extra, like the Dark Ray deck, you're often, when you get going, you're, like, a little bit short of one-hit KOing things. This can push you over the top on that. So, I think I think this card will be reasonable. Like, the draw three is not good enough, but, like, draw two and, like, get a kicker for damage seems fine. Attributes, expansion, look at that. I can filter just to Sun and Moon. Look at that. Here's all the sun and moon trainers. Let's just look through the trainers real quick. Heal 20 damage, and that's probably not great. Oh, and I can just click through this way, can't I? Reprint. Yep, see, so this, this doesn't seem like a particularly great card. But, uh, you know, draw two, get damage, seems fine. Draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. If it's your first turn, draw until you have eight cards in your hand. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. If Verse Seeker rotates, this card might see play in September. The EV in Sun and Moon, we'll take a look at that in a second. These cards are not in the in the client yet. They release on the third, so you can't actually get these cards yet, but they're in here and they're all coded. Lily will see play. You think this card's good? I think this card's probably worse than N on average. I, I I, don't think this is better than N and Sycamore a lot of the time. Like, the fact that N 
has an aggressive stance when you get behind, when, like, your opponent puts you behind on prizes, and, like, when your opponent gets ahead on prizes and you can just, like, end to take their cards away and, like, you gas back up is a really big catch-up mechanic. A lot of time that swings games that you otherwise would never win. So I feel like in a world where, like, Professor and N are both legal, this card's going to struggle. Also, you have to consider, like, draw until you have six cards in your hand. How many cards is this drawing on average? So, like, if, you know, Giovanni Scheme drawing until you had five cards, average only drawing two to three cards, this is maybe drawing three to four cards. Is that that much better than, like, draw two cards and get 20 extra damage? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see this. I, I think in a world where, like, we don't have Verse Seeker, that card might be fine. Search your deck for a basic and put it onto your bench. Alright, our tournament's coming up. This? Does does Nest Ball... Does Nest Ball trigger... And does Nest Ball trigger, like, Shaman setup ability? Or no? Anyone know? If my opponent's playing Grass Colorless, probably um, Vespa Queen. I actually think my Dark Ray deck's gonna play, gonna play that level ball card too. Like I cut the hoop out of the deck because I wasn't really interested in having it a lot of the time. No, it doesn't. Okay, but I think I think I want that that let that go get a basic for my standard deck because like I just want to get Dark Rays and Dragons and like put them out on my bench. Your opponent has okay. So again, we're not gonna play the Shaman out because Shaman has an ability that uh, happens when we play it out from our hand. Oh, does it say from hand? So this is some kind of Raticate deck. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench. Okay, look at that. It says right there in the rules text. So I think I would st I'm still going to end up playing that card. Man, it sucks. Maybe, do they not have ends in their deck? Maybe, are they the mill deck so they don't care if I draw extra cards? Okay, so we're going to draw a few extra cards, but we're on the draw. So like if they end us, they can take them away. You know, I'm playing at the 1K tomorrow. I have Esper Control sitting in this deck box right here. It's uh, missing two cards that I'm getting when I get there tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, reading reading Shaman here, it's obvious that it doesn't work. Devron with the cheer. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Welcome, bud. I'm pretty sure Roaring Skies is rotating, right? I'm not I'm not 100% on that, but I believe I believe Shaman and a lot of the EX Pokémon are rotating out in September. There isn't a rotation happening with this new set, but in September the rotation's going to happen. I'm still kind of fuzzy with the set names of which cards are in which sets, but I believe it's a bunch of the EXs that are going to rotate out of standard. Oh, come on, opponent. Nest Ball, I don't believe it triggers Hoopa. But I'm not playing Hoopa in my deck, so... I, I'm, I'll, I'm assuming Hoopa's worded the same way as Shaman. Yeah, Hoopa says when you play this from your hand, so Nest Ball does not trigger that either. But I'm not, I'm not interested in that, I don't think. I think I'm probably, like, in my standard deck, I'm going to test... Probably, like, four Nest Ball, two Ultra Ball. Like, I'm, I'm down to one Shaman in my standard build anyways. Can probably cut a Dark Ray with, if that's the case. Oh, 
Is there no time? There is a timer on this phase. My opponent's clock down here. They're down to eight minutes, eight and a half minutes. Oh, you mean timer where it goes tick and then gives them the 15 seconds before they lose? There must not be, which is annoying. Again, not playing the Shaman out. All right, to so the spinner at Aridos deck. Ultra Ball, sure. Probably a Shaman. They've got Talonflame in their deck, too. Weird. Sceptile, sure. So one of these must either be a Shaman or something that draws cards already. Earth Seeker for Shauna, sure. Definitely playing. Shauna's usually a card you play in the mill deck. That's ex exactly correct, Delicious Waffles. Without, without a player's championship, I have no no incentive to travel long distances to an event. Uh, dark Patch. I already have a patch here, so I'm going to grab an Elixir out of here for now, I think. Yeah, I really don't want to... I really don't want to Sycamore this first turn and bin two Verse Seekers. A grapple. Yeah, there's an N. Pretty happy to end on the first turn. That's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball. Discarding. Probably going to use this Escape Rope, right? Yeah, I'll bend these two for now. And go grab a Dark Ray out of my deck here. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and max elixir here. Sweet, we hit. Then I discarded a dark energy with my dark patch. So let's go ahead and do that. Put that on there. What does this do? If a coin of heads the active Pokemon is now put. Sure. So I think I'm just going to escape rope here. It's a shame we didn't find a Lysander because then we just knock this Rotata out. So I'm assuming this is going to put the Sceptile up. I'm going to go ahead and shaman up some cards here. All right. And then I've got Salamance for Dragon Energies down the line and a Dark Rail. Let's go ahead and Elixir here. Hit again. Running hot. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. Then I'm going to Verse Seeker this N and go ahead and N. Alrighty, so hmm. I can go ahead and put this double dragon energy on my dragon here. I can put fighting fury belt on here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play this parallel city out. Yeah, I think so. So I'm hitting for one, two, three, four, five. So this does 20 damage for each dark. So this is hitting for 130 right now because it does plus 20 base. So this is 100, 120, 130 with that. I'm going to go ahead and Parallel City and lock their bench here. It's possible they could just bump this out, so maybe I should wait, but I really don't think that card's particularly good. I've got one more Shaman in my deck still, so this Ultra Ball can go get that Shaman next turn if we don't get End. This game is very therapeutic. Yeah, it's kind of nice just, like, being able to do your thing and not worry about your opponent messing with your stuff. Just, like, when you're taking your turn, everything's on the board, and you just get to make your decisions and not have to, like, wait for responses and stuff like that. I mean, I like the complexity of games like Hex and Magic where my opponents can respond, but I also like the ability to just do what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball here and discard these two, see if my other Shaman is prized or not. My other Shaman is prized. That said, um... I guess I'll grab Giratina. 
And then I think I'm actually going to not play this out because we're going to knock out this guy here and then uh, collect two prizes. It looks like my opponent's actually AFK, which is kind of... I probably should have played the higher the higher ticket one. Yeah, there's the, there's the Shaman that I said I thought was prized. It's all in, no sideboard. I, I mean... The decks are consistent enough, I think, that you probably don't need a sideboard. You can, like, play one-ofs and stuff and actually find them. Once turn turn for your attack, both active Pokemon, except for grass Pokemon or poison, sure. This is probably going to knock an energy off my guy. Alright, so that shuffles their hand into their deck, and if they flip, they flip a coin, if heads they draw seven, if tails they draw four. Yeah, basically waffles. Uh, I'm planning. Oh god, your photos act focus now. Poison discard all tool cards. That's rude. Um, I am planning to. Uh, I am planning to play uh, in both the invitationals that are next year. Max elixir, huh? So this is kind of an interesting decision. I could. Ultra Ball, discard both of these, and then not get a Pokemon out of my deck, and then Shaman to draw six. But Elixir is probably better than most cards I'm drawing, so let's just go ahead and do this. And do this on here. This has a free retreat cost because it has a Dark Energy on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and retreat to this. And again, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait a turn here and not, uh, not use this Ultra Ball yet to get an extra card in our hand now. Another dark energy, so we can slide our dark energy out into something, discard our other two cards, and then shaman to draw six. So our opponent's got a septile up here. Sure, extra damage from poison. I've got one, two, five, six, seven dark energies right now. So I'm hitting for 160, so I only need to find one energy in these three cards to one-hit KO this. That's probably going to find me an energy. Discarding a VS Seeker feels a little bit bad, but I've only used one of those, so not too worried about it. Poison's really not that big of a deal, since I have a free retreat cost, and when you retreat, you're no longer poisoned. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this Giratina out, and I go ahead and stick a more... Just need a energy and energy. Uh, let's go ahead and put this would have also knocked my opponent's guy out. Let's go ahead and max elixir here. We bricked, that's fine. Let's go ahead and dark patch, grab that and put it on to here so it has a free retreat cost. Um they go ahead and play this out here. And then let's go ahead and retreat this for free. Got this this dark ray is so good. Dark pulse for infinite. Cash, casual 230U. I'll take these prices, please. And that's the game. Alright, waiting on the other one here. There isn't a timer till the next round. I guess we can go back to looking at Sun and Moon cards. Filters. So we were at uh, Nest Ball, right? Oh, next round starting. We'll do that in between later. Hope everyone's having a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you're at. Welcome to the finals of our Venusaur tournament here. Look at the EV. Okay. Uh, opponents got water and fire, likely Volcanion. The water came first, though, so unsure exactly. I guess this is expanded, so it could be like a Blastoise deck, too. What 
would like to go first. Any reliable resources for decklist or discussion in Pokemon TCG? Uh, not that aren't behind paywalls, it feels like. We have... We talk about Pokemon on my Discord server, but that's also technically behind a paywall because it's for my Twitch subscribers. So no basics. We take a mulligan here, and then my opponent gets an extra card, but we do get to be on the play, so if we have an N here, we can take their extra card away. I'm going to go ahead and play this out here again. Not playing this out yet because it's a setup ability. Volcanion. All right, let's start by trainer mailing and see what we find. Verse Seeker Lysander. So I think this is actually uh, a good example of a place where we just don't take a card with trainer mail because what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to Ultra Ball for something, discarding Olympia and Professor Sycamore, and then we'll play out that thing, play out Parallel City, shaman up a bunch, and then probably Verse Seeker the Sycamore. So I'm just going to hit done here and not take anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball here. And bin these two and go grab our dark ray that we want to start putting stuff on. And the shaman's going to draw us five cards here. I'm going to go ahead. Everything that I've wanted to read that has a relevant title asks me to pay for it halfway through. It's on every, basically every Pokemon site. Uh, wow, this hand, this is really awkward. My opponent is playing Volcanion. Um, I'm going to slide my Double Dragon Energy out on here, and then I am going to Verse Seeker this Sycamore. Getting the Darks into my Crypt isn't the worst here because I have Dark Patches in my deck, but discarding a Double Dragon and a Verse Seeker doesn't feel great. Alright, so I hit another Ultra Ball here. I can go ahead and Dark Patch this onto my Dark Ray. Uh, I think I'm going to put this on here because this is likely going to likely going to be attacking this turn. I could Ultra... Ultra Ball, but I think I'd rather just pass the turn here. This next double Dragon draw here is pretty good. Because we can slide this out on here and then Dragon Strike this for 130. And he has to be careful with how many EXs he plays out now, because Salamence hits for more with each EX. Shauna, why are these people playing? This is the second opponent playing Shauna. I don't, I don't understand. They're like, just like, okay, so what? So it takes you 40 more to your opponent's grass Pokemon. Stack just 20 more for each water energy attached to it. I am so confused. He di They didn't attack. Um, okay, I'm going to put this on here and Dragon Strike your guy. Yeah. I don't. I, I just, okay, I'm just going to knock their guys out. I think we're going to play one of the higher stakes cues after this. Even if we lose in the first round, I'd like... To play against some real decks. So we can't use Dragon Strike next turn, but we can we can attach a Dark Energy to here and then Ultra Ball for the other Dark Ray and get that going. So I can go ahead, actually, huh, Sycamore kind of changes what I want to do. Definitely doing this. How greedy am I? The answer to that question is always very greedy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here, and then I'm going to Ultra Ball and discard these two and go get this Dark Ray, and then I'm going to Dark Ray and then Sycamore. Sure, but you don't have to be connected to have data like Hex has. Hex has infinitely infinite data and it uh its community isn't nearly as large as magic so you don't have to be as large as magic to like give your players access to data or have good sites that give you data all right and now this gets to retreat for free i'm just going to retreat this and then this has six seven eight nine so this sits for 230 210 210 yeah 210 just gonna one shot our way down their squad here Are the ARG tournaments cash? Do you have a, a link to specifics on what those tournaments are? Because I've seen, the, I've got a couple of regional tournaments on my calendar, but I wouldn't mind playing some other independent cash tournaments. 
specifically with constructor learning. I think it's a great thing. Um, I for the average person playing the game, having the data accessible is a good thing. For something like Pokemon and Magic, where like big teams exist, like that same thing would exist in Hex, and like it gives a small subset of people a huge advantage that doesn't have to be there. That's I, I it's, it's just yeah it's I don't I think it's bad. All right, so they Lysandered this, and then I'm gonna put this on here, which lets me retreat this for free, and then I'm gonna Lysander this nerd, and I'm gonna knock out the guy that they put the energy on. I could be doing more stuff on my turns here, but I think we've just got enough going on that I just want to kill their guys. How's this client compared to Magic Online? Well, this is a modern piece of software, so yeah. It's not, it's not even, it's not even close. Honestly, this deck might want to play level ball too. I have no idea. Like we just, the eight, people ask me why I play the versus ladder as opposed to the, the eight ticket cues on here. And like the versus ladder has MMR pairing at least. Like these have just been a slaughter. None of my opponents have been playing anything close to real expanded deck so far. And you get non- you get non-real decks on the ladder too, but they hold flip two heads, deal thirty. All right, so we knocked we knocked out. So when they don't have another, we still have one prize left. But when we knock out their last guy, and they don't have any more to put up, they lose the game. All right, we get some free coins. Yay, first place. What do we get? We got an Ancient Origins, a Steam Siege, and some Evolution Specs, and a trophy and some other things. I mean, Magic Online's not fun when it's frustrating because you're losing to stupid things like bugs. Uh, yeah, I'm going to join the 24 ticket one with the Dark Ray Dragon stack. Yeah, the Cheerios deck's a little wild. That's that's definitely for sure. All right, sweet. Hopefully the competition's a little bit better in this one. Which I'm sure I'm gonna get my wish and get slaughtered this first game, but you know we've got tickets to burn. We all we didn't pay money for any of the tickets, so might as well burn them here trying to get a bunch of packs. Who? What kind of psychopath picks tails? Good lord. Good morning, after you day. Good night to everyone, wherever you're in the world. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your weekend here with us as we battle some Pokemon TCG. My name's Jeff Ogland here on this Twitch channel. We stream all sorts of card games. This hand is medium. Um, hopefully my opponent ends us on the first turn, or we draw, or they're not mulliganing. I'm going to put this out. You always want to play out your extra bench Pokemon that don't have abilities when you play them out when you're on the draw, because your opponent could end you and shuffle them away. I'd argue there's not many serious players on Magic Online either. And we could get item locked on the first turn, which would not be good. This hand does not do a lot, and I put Salamence up as my active. Okay, so we get a bunch of basics. This is probably a. I'm not sure. I'm not even gonna try and predict what they are. All right, Sable Eye and a bunch of. So these turn into things that item lock me. So we really need to draw something that does stuff here. That doesn't really qualify. And I could put this on here, and then I just don't have anything else going on. Right, got a double close energy here. Does he have the Trebish is the question. Ascension makes this evolve, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's annoying. So now this turns off items, right? 
Yeah, I can't play item cards. Um, and yeah, I'm putting this on here, and I think I'm just Lysandering this. And then, this is really important here. I need to Verse Seeker the Lysander now in case he's able to retreat this back out. Do I run Garbodor in this deck? I do not. I don't think the Garbodor package is particularly good. I guess it's good, like, in this matchup for, like, shutting off item lock. But, like, the only reason the item lock's relevant this game is because we're not... We haven't drawn particularly well. That's kind of unfortunate. Like, these games, on average, are pretty low variance. But, uh, there's still some variance present, obviously. And this is one of the games where we're getting hit by it a little bit. Another Team Flare Grunt. Sure. Oh, and then he can just evolve this one, too, right? Glad I got the Lysander back, I guess. I'd love to draw a Shaman here. Another Verse Seeker. Alright, well, let's put another one out here. And then uh, Verse Seeker the Lysander back to my hand. If I, Like I said, if I like had escape ropes here or something, I'm going to Dark Patch here. Just like put this on here so we just like have the energy out. That's, that's some, uh, speaking as someone who's logged literally hundreds of hours of Magic Online, it's the same experience across everything. But the only way you're getting real testing while playing games like that is to have people that you know are reasonable Magic players sitting across the computer from you on the other side. God, this is so obnoxious. I wish I could just get this out. Would love an escape rope. Okay, well, I mean, we can just do this all day, I guess. I hate, this feels real bad having burned all my verse seekers like this, but that's the world we're living in. So as long as the opponent tree slam do 20 to any of your opponents benched. He has to have another energy this turn. If we just hit an escape rope here, we can start knocking those guys out with this Dark Ray. Maybe I'm supposed to wait on this Lysander until... Until I have a little bit more going on. Because, like, this needs a double color synergy to start attacking. Your opponent's attacks cost more. Oh, so I can actually play items right now. Well, that's... that's fine. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just passing the turn here. I guess if I put an energy on here, I can possibly retreat this next turn. And I have a dark patch, so if it gets discarded, this is only bad if we get uh, if we draw Ultra Ball next turn. Oh, we knew they had a team flare grunts. That was dumb. I shouldn't have played that out. I knew I knew they had a team flare grunts. This is getting the team flare grunts back to their hand. Sure. Hey, Seiju. So we're going to hit for 70 here. Sure. So this is dead next turn. Oh, that's sweet. So... Double dragon and then retreat this. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, and then the question is, do I want a dark, dark patch onto here? I probably do. Just while I can. Do I just knock this out or do I want to knock this one out? I think I want to knock this out. Yeah, my opponent, my opponent, the... I don't know if this configuration is considered a real version of the deck my opponent's playing, but um, the Trev, Trevent deck is actually... There's lots of different variations of Trev that are powerful. This card locks your opponent out of playing items. Team Flare Grunt, sure. Knock one of my energies off. We knew that was coming. That's their supporter for the turn. Double colorless, yep. Uh, huh. So do I want to trainer mail this turn is the question. I could Lysander this in trainer mail. That doesn't seem worth it. 
just going to slide this onto here and then Dark Pulse. I guess I didn't have to put that on here, so maybe that's a little bit loose. Max Elixir, sure. So I can't play these item cards as long as one of these Trevs is my opponent's active Pokemon. But my opponent doesn't have a lot going on here either, so... I, I could Lysander this if I wanted the Trainer Mail. Okay, now I'm going to Lysander this since I had a Fighting Fury belt for this guy. So, let's go ahead and Trainer Mail. Ultra Ball. Do I want to Ultra Ball? If I Ultra Ball, I can Shaman. Yeah, that seems better than just playing these. This might be wrong. And maybe I'm just supposed to put the Fighting Fury belt on here so I keep this energy out. But I kind of have a hard time passing up a draw. A draw six. I've played against Trev a few times, like Trev decks with a few times of versus ladders with this, and they seem like a good matchup every time I play it. Uh, so I actually can't really do anything here. I guess... Yeah, I guess I'm just knocking this guy out. Another Dark Race, not the worst. They are going to get to kill this next turn, though, but this is still dealing 2x to this, so... Yeah, I probably should have just put the Fighting Fury belt on here, honestly. That was probably wrong. What does this do? Put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. I think I switched to that. No, okay. So they get to draw two prizes here. Yeah, that might have been wrong. Huh. I think I want to just knock this out. I guess that's not very good. Hmm. Any thoughts on whether or not you'd Lysander this? I guess that really doesn't matter, right? Like, this is going to hit me for... Yeah, I'm just going to knock this guy out. Giratina is a great draw here because it gives me something to put this double dragon energy on. Skyla, so I'm assuming this is going to get a card that puts bench Pokemon out for them. Break is irrelevant at the sports state. Yeah, yeah, the, yep, I agree. So, Lub, the thing you have to understand, and actually I'm writing an article about this for people that are coming from other TCGs, is that... The, this game just works on a different axis than other other games that we're used to playing. Mm, sure. Okay, I'm asleep. Seriously? Oh, no, that's not the one I thought it was. Okay, I thought this was the poison one where we take extra. All right, we're awake and can kill this guy, so that's the game. Dark Pulse. And again, we still have a prize left, but opponent has no Pokemon, so we win. Sweet. So, we fumbled around and didn't really do much at the start there, and we still ended up pulling that out, which is nice. Dark Ray EX, never, never not. Never not the one, the most important one. Hope everyone's having a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your weekend here with us. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a professional TCG player, and here on this channel, we play all sorts of 
card games. We play Pokemon, Hex, Magic, lots of different things. If you're enjoying the content and you're new, I'd encourage you to show a little bit of support by using the follow button there on the screen. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps other people find my content. If you're really enjoying the content, the absolute best thing you can do is make a channel subscription. It costs $4.99 a month, and it helps support myself financially as well as the Twitch infrastructure that we all use and enjoy every day. If you're looking for more content for myself, my YouTube channel is linked in the channel description, and you can find lots of different archives of me playing all sorts of games. There are tons of hours of Pokemon content if you're looking for more of that, and I break up all my games on there by game, by format, by deck, so you can watch just the content that you care about. Finally, the Super Rodcast is a logo up there. They are a competitive-focused Pokemon TCG podcast, and they sponsor the stream. If you're interested in breaking into competitive Pokemon or just upping your game a little bit as you play online, you should definitely give them a listen. You can find them on SoundCloud, iTunes, Twitter, and Facebook at the Super Rodcast. Uh, Seiju, taking a little bit of a personal note, uh, I, I work on a Linux distribution called Bodhi Linux. That's B-O-D-H-I-L-I-N-U-X. I'll post a link in chat. We actually, I actually just pushed out a brand new release today. So you can check check that out. And if you're another, if you're a computer person or not a computer person, feel free. You know, so the software product to work on. So in between rounds of these tournaments, we've been looking at sweet sun and moon cards that are going to be legal here soon. And someone said I should check out the EV. It says, when you attach a basic energy, oh, jeez, a basic energy card from your hand to this Pokemon, you research your deck from a card that evolves to the same energy and put it onto, wow, that is really good. You're not wrong. There might be a seriously sweet Eevee deck. I'm losing a lot of coin flips tonight. Yeah, the starting coin flips. Yay, we won. Yes, I would like to go first, please. Hey, uh, this hand's not particularly good. It's like a, you know, as always, an N or a Sycamore away from being, you know, potentially great. Another Dark Energy, not particularly stellar. Uh, I'm going to put this Fighting Fury Belt on here, and I think I'm actually just going to shame him to draw two here. It's a little bit mediocre, but my hand doesn't have a lot going on. And hey, look, there's a Sycamore. I'm going to go ahead and put this Fighting Fury Belt on here just, just because, basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and play this Escape Rope because I'd like to have this up rather than my Dark Ray. And then we'll go ahead and Sycamore here. Having energies in my discard pile is not the worst because this deck plays Hydreon. And we can go ahead and play Dark Patch here and put one of these Dark Energies onto my Dark Ray and then pass the turn. Leading on Shaman always feels bad. That's why my opponent did a little broken heart there when the game started. I'm assuming that's why. Okay, they've got a Hoopa to get going here. So Scoundrel Ring's going to set up and let them find a bunch of EX Pokemon. So Salamance going to be excellent here against my opponent playing EX Pokemon. Ooh, also playing a Dark Ray deck with Yevitals, it looks like. So I can actually knock this out next turn. Max Elixir, sure. Corliss, so I get to draw six here. I don't know why they did the Broken Heart unless they didn't have the Hoopa to start. Their hand's pretty reasonable. Hydreon says, as long as there's a stadium in play, all of your dragon Pokemons have a retreat cost of two less, and its attack isn't affected by effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's able to attack through things like Regice and Jolteon and um, uh, Carbink, which is nice. Yeah, so they got a Dark Patch, and then they used an Ultra Ball to discard some stuff here. So it looks like my opponent's playing the Turbo Dark Ray deck that's uh, fairly popular. So, now what am I doing here? I think I'm just putting this on here and knocking out my opponent's Shaman. This is, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and Olympia here. Slide this on up, and then KO their EX here. Grab some prizes. And, and a Dowsing Machine. So, Dowsing Machine, discard two cards from her hand, and then we can put a Trainer card from her discard pile back into our hand so we can get this dark patch back and get some more energy flow in here this next turn. A Yvital Break. This attack does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. 120 and costs 3. Okay. So Evil Ball. Oh, I have no idea what that does. 
Attacks this discard do 20 less for each opponent. Okay, so I don't really... This card's not attacking in this matchup. 170, that's a big hit. Um, Alright, what are we doing here? Um... Am I just escape roping here to start? I feel like I am. I get escape rope and then dark patch onto here. And then... Yeah, none of my options feel very good here. I am playing Dark Ray Dragons. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm on a dousing machine. And discard. I think I'm just discarding these two ends. Grab an escape rope. This doesn't feel particularly great. I do not have an ultra ball. It makes the decision harder. This hits for 120. I guess this has... They both have pretty similar amounts of health. I'm going to go ahead and play Dark Patch here. And the question becomes, do I want to play this out or do I want to save it? I feel like I want to just put it in my bin. I have two more Dark Patches in my deck, so yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and Sycamore here. Uh, Salamance is a good hit here. Uh, let's go ahead and play him and play... Dark Ray, and then Elixir here. Hit. That's nice. Get to go ahead and get Salamance going. I haven't actually played an energy card out yet for my turn. Do I want to bin two Verse Seekers here? I really don't. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to Shaman and draw three. Hit a Double Dragon energy. That's nice. Um... Lysander's pretty good. Hmm. This could get punished, but I'm going to do it anyways. My opponent's got a switch and a Lysander here. We're going to be in a little bit of trouble, but if they don't, we should be in an okay spot. I guess I don't have a good way to get this out of my active Pokemon slot, do I? I guess I can always Verse Seeker for something next turn. Oh, they can just start Oblivion Winging here, can't they? Oh, they have. They have. Oh, so they just need Lysander here. I forgot they have this Dark Ray on their bench. That's awkward. Yep. Yep. Fuck. That was a mistake. I forgot that was on their bench, and this is a Fighting Fury built on it. Oh, jeez. Oh, the mistakes I have made. Um, yep, let's put this up here. All right, Dark Angel, what's do? I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this is hitting for 100. I'm going to put this on here. And then I guess I'm Ultra Balling here before I do anything. Let's go grab my Dark Ray that makes my retreat cost free. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's sitting for 150 right now. Yeah, I think I'm just first seekering for Sycamore here. Hmm. All right. That missed. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is one forty, one sixty, one seventy. 
Get it for 180 this turn. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to escape rope here. I'll put this guy up. This might be. This might be wrong. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he's going to be short of killing this Dark Ray. That's unfortunate. I should have counted that better. That was a bad switch. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I should have just attacked the this and then put this other one up and hit it, and then I could like Lysander this Hoopa and finish it. Do I play Tool Scrapper? Uh, yeah, I've got one of those. So he just needs a dark energy to be able to retreat this for free. This has five, six, seven. So this is hitting for 140, 160, 170. So if he's got an, another energy, he needs energy for both of these or a switch plus an energy for this, which you could very realistically have. Double colorless energy. Oh, that just lets him discard to retreat it. Okay. So he's got a dark patch here. He's good to go because he can discard these. Yeah, and now he's going to be able to one-shot this, which is unfortunate. Birch. Come on, Tails. Wait. Yeah, sweet. So he draws four. Still looking for a dark patch. He's only played one, so... This... Missed. Okay. Damn. What a cock tease. Just had it anyways. Wait. Why was this able to... Oh, Dark Pulse is double. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, sweet. So I can knock this out now, right? I can put this on here, which is then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 4, 5, 9. So it's 180, 100, 200, and then the reverse valley makes 210, and that's how much this has. So Lysander this and knock it out. Good night, my sweet prince. That's a good draw. A double dragon was a good draw. I guess he can put this up now. Oh, I guess this can do with an energy. This can hit this and this. Yeah, but this doesn't get knocked out by taking 30, right? Yeah, this is going to be go to 200. That's seven cards coming. Um, no, I think, I, I think I'm pretty dead here, actually. Because he's going to knock this out and then I, I need a lysander or a verse seeker and i'm already through three verse seekers on a lysander yeah i messed this up because any of his guys could knock this out then and then he gets to claim his his stuff because i have to ko this i'm pretty sure i've got nothing here needed needed to draw something there because this, this isn't an EX Pokemon. So, um, yeah, that's not an EX Pokemon. So I can do this, and I can do this, and I can I can do this. That was one of, that was one of many mistakes. Um, the, the other mistake being the fact that I picked the wrong prize here. No, nah, that wasn't really a mistake. That's just random. But um, <sighs> that's really unfortunate. What was the other mistake I made this game? There were a few. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the video. The The sequencing on the Salamance was probably fine. He, like, had to have a Lysander there to knock it out that one turn. Or was that... No, that was the second round, right? Yeah. Yeah, the escape rope line, that was, that was, the, well, the escape rope line kind of ended up working out since he didn't kill our guy and we hit the double dragon energy to knock out his Yevital, but I guess knocking out the Yevital that way forced us to have to use a Lysander when we might necessarily not wanted to have. Oh, 
Oh, Salamance, why have you failed me again? Why have you failed me again, Salamance? I don't know if I really have good rankings on favorite to least favorite. Or mulliganing an opponent on the play. That's unfortunate. God, this hand is bad. But like so, if I notice his retreat, Dark Ray is there. What what ends up being different would be the question. Like what's what's objectively the best play if that's not there? No idea what my opponent is doing here. Um, hopefully, we draw something that lets us get out of these cards in our hand, or my opponent opponent can't retreat. Sure. Hopefully, they end us. That would be ideal. Nope, that's sad. And another dark patch. Uh, yeah, I'm just putting this on here and passing the turn. Does not feel good. I could, like, play this out to draw one card, but there's no way that's right. I think I'm supposed to wait at least a turn here. Well, that conveniently knocks out his guy. I think I'm supposed to play this to draw two here. Lysander. Huh. So if I Lysander up this, I hit it for 70. Yeah, that doesn't seem worth it. I think I'm just supposed to knock this out and collect a prize. And then next turn I can Lysander that other one up and collect a prize. Would like an Ultra Ball cast. It's great. Yep, Ultra Ball is wonderful. All of my archives get posted on YouTube after the fact. The Twitch archives are only enabled in case my local recordings get messed up. So that is why that's how that is. All right, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to Ultra Ball in these two. Grab another Dark Ray here, double Dark Patch onto him. I guess I'm not playing an energy out this turn, so yeah, this was this was a little sloppy. I probably should have discarded. Nah, no, that's probably still right. And then I can Olympia this back. And then attack with this twice to knock his guy out. I've not played the Mewtwo deck. I've played almost every other deck. I've got M Guard and M Scissor on here and M Ray. Do I have a Hoopa? There's not a Hoopa in this deck. Two deck for two basic Pokemon. Put them on your bench. Sure. Is this the... Nope, that's not it. Does 30 damage on your opponent's bench Pokemon? Sure. What does this do? Venusaur EX. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Sure. Salamance is a good draw. Let's me put a double dragon out here on something. Uh, this probably can't do anything next turn, so... Yeah, Dark Pulse. Knock your guy out. Ooh, I didn't think about double colorless. I guess I should have. Search your deck for two basics. Sure. This is going to hit me for 60 and then poison me. So I'm going to take 70 here, which is lethal. That's unfortunate. I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, I guess I'm putting up the Stark Ray. Elixir. Hit that on here. And then the question becomes, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this is hitting for 130 right now. 
if I hit a double dragon and a dark patch and a dark guy, I can kill him. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sick more here before instead of playing this out. We were super punished for that decision. Good lord. Um, I guess we're not necessarily punished. We have a shaman in our deck still, I believe. So let's go ahead and play these out and put a fighting fury built on here. And then... Yeah, I can parallel city this way, and then ultra ball ditch. This is ultra ball is going to be feel real bad if the other shaman is prized. I should have paid attention. It's not, thank God. So we're looking to hit dark patch plus a double dragon here, so we can knock this guy out. Check out this video here if you're not completely familiar with the rules. I'd like to draw until I have six cards in my hand. Double dragon plus dark patch, please. Oh, this could still be a dark patch. Yes, there's dark patch. That's great. So now we get to go ahead and dark patch one of these onto here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 120, 140, 150. Double dragon makes it 190. Kiss your Venusaur. Good night, sir. I say good day. Well, I know Magic. Magic doesn't have uh, a digital client that's worth playing, so we don't play Magic on the computer. We play Paper Magic on my stream here uh, a few times a month. You can check those out. There's also videos to those uh, underneath the stream. That's adorable. That's so cute. You got a you got a you got a goat thing. I I have a good deck. I agree. It's like, this game's a good example of, like, why I don't like Hoopa in the deck. Like, Hoopa would have just clogged my bench. I really didn't have room for another Hoopa here. For, like, another Pokemon on my bench here. Like, there's bench slots are not free. There's a very real cost to playing a card like Hoopa in your deck, and I think a lot of people don't, don't acknowledge the fact that that cost exists. So let's finish looking at the trainers here in Sun and Moon. Show the cards I don't own. I've attended a lot of premier events since I started playing Pokemon. How long have I been playing? I started playing Pokemon uh, midway, uh, a little, about six weeks ago, I started playing. started playing after the Players' Championship. Um, and then I've attended a League Cup, which isn't really a premier event. It was like a 50-player tournament in a store. And I'm going to attend a regional in March and then another regional in June. Perhaps we'll travel a little bit if we do all day through those. This card's... This card's great. I'm going to play this in Dark Ray. I'm going to test this in Rainbow Road. Like, this card is very good. Super reasonable. Doesn't trigger things like Shaman and Hoopa, but super great for a Dex full of EX Pokemon. Uh, we talked about Professor Kuki here earlier. I think this card is reasonable. I don't think it's super powerful, but it, it might see some amount of play. I'm also going to test this in my standard deck. Yeah, Nest Ball is real, real good. Flip two coins for each head, search your deck for an evolution Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then this is an interesting card. So you're like, you're you're twenty five percent to do nothing, and you're fifty you're twenty five percent to get two things. What regional am I going to? I live in Central Illinois, so I'm going to be attending the Collinsville Regional in March, and then the Milwaukee Regional in June. Ultra Ball getting a printing. Okay, wow, there aren't a lot of trainers in this set. Okay. There's, there's a couple of good ones, though. Nest Ball and uh, Professor Kuki, both both definitely worth checking out. Let's look at the Sun and Moon Pokemans. Bear Hug. Yes, again, this is just like a card that's just like super outclassed by GXs. A lot of these cards are just like super outclassed by all the GX Pokemon. Thirty more in your opponents. That's that's. I agree. Yeah, earlier we were talking about that card. I think any deck that plays Scheme is just going to automatically play Kuki, and I think some decks that aren't playing Scheme are going to want to play Kuki. Searcher for two basics. I reside in Bloomington, Illinois, which is. Smack dab in the center, basically.
Double jet, discard two water energies from your hand. Select to 60 more for each more you just sent. That's great. And Lincoln, yep. I taught in Springfield for a year and a half, so I commuted right through Lincoln a couple of times a week during that. Crosscut, if your opponent's active Pokemon has an evolution, flip four coins, this is 50 damage times the number of heads. That's not very good. Lollipop, Litten. I think we're going to... My buddy manages one of the card stores here in Bloomington. I think he's going to start running Pokemon tournaments. A lot of the regulars have started picking up cards since I started playing, and I think we're going to... This card is... I think... I don't. This card's probably not going to be great while... Sh okay, so actually, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and with Nest Ball, this card's probably playable while Shaman's still legal. When, this, when Shaman's done being legal, this card's going to be great, I think, but... I think even while Shaman's legal, with Nest Ball being a thing, this might be fine. So, ability, once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have three cards in your hand. So, like, that's that's not completely unreasonable. And then its attack is okay, too. Like, for triple colorless, just 60 plus 20 more times the amount of energies attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So... It's a Sandcastle. Alright, I... I stopped playing Pokemon and looking at Pokemon stuff after Generation 2 forever ago, so a lot of these Pokemon are very strange. So, for those of you that are just joining us, we are currently waiting for the next round of the tournament I'm playing in to fire. Psyduck. Yeah, yeah, just like being a basic is huge. It just, it really, really is. Deck, I'm sure your deck for a grass Pokemon reveal it and put it into your hand. That's a stage one, so probably not good enough. There's like a lot of the better cards in this set are like stage one and stage twos, and that means they're not going to be particularly great. There's no GXs in here, are there? I don't know what Passaman is. Do you have any other filters tagged here? Three Q one five W just subscribed. Thank you and welcome to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Subscriptions are the absolute best way you can show your support for the channel. They support myself financially as well as the Twitch infrastructure. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Subs help me produce the content that I do more often because the more money I make from content, the less time I can have to spend doing doing other things. There'll be similar ones next weekend, but they'll have Sun and Moon as prizes. That's interesting. Do you know what the prize payouts will be? Will they be exactly the same? I've got 60 tickets left, so maybe this will be the last the last 24 ticket event we play tonight. I really like this expanded deck, and damn it, I, I, I knew I should have waited. I bought Rainbow Road in paper, and then I started playing it more, and it's it's super explosive, but it's not super consistent. And this, this deck's so consistent. Like, Dark Patch and Elixir is so good. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you doing that. And that's a good note for everyone. My YouTube channel is linked below, and I do my best to break everything up on there and catch the archives on there. Um, one bonus you get 3Q for subscribing is that I do maintain a subs-only Discord server where we talk about Pokemon and Magic and Hex and all sorts of different gaming stuff. So make sure you uh, link your discordapp.com account to your subscribed Twitch account, and the subs-only server will appear there in the listing for you. Oh, these are only the ones in the theme deck. That makes sense. So this... So these cards are in the theme. So this isn't the whole set. That's why... 
you want a consistent build like this, play regular Turbo Dark and expand. I don't like the regular Turbo Dark decks. I really, I really don't. I, they don't, they don't seem like they're doing anything particularly impressive or powerful. I got a Roaring Skies pack out of that and Steam Siege. That was a tournament we played previously. Like I've got, I've got, uh, do I have regular Turbo Dark built right now? I, I had it built, I had it built at one point and I just like, it's just not impressive in my opinion. I really, I really don't, if, if, I really don't feel like you need Garbodor to beat a lot of the decks people are playing. It makes Grinja a lot easier, but like a lot of the decks, I feel like you just don't need it. You could just like mow down their guys and the dragons offer a lot of utility that the Turbo Dark Ray deck just doesn't have. And like you were kind of faster because in addition to having elixirs and patches, your elixirs are like slightly less consistent because you only have 10 dark energies, but like double dragon energies are a huge boost. Plus, I think I've played against the, the regular Turbo Dark Raid decks in Standard and Expanded, and I think this deck is a favorite against those. The turns off Pokemon abilities, guys. Garbodor. This guy. Garbodor. Yeah, I said his name right, I think. I likely said his name right. I probably didn't, actually, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. A lot of the Dark Raid decks play that. It's more consistent overall. Can you explain why it's more consistent? Because, like, the only thing that screams more consistent to me about it is the Max Elixir. And other than that, it doesn't seem like it does anything particularly consistent E that this deck's not doing. In addition to this deck getting the utility of of these dragons. Like, this 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 card is huge. I can't, I can't oversell Salamance enough. Uh, I don't have the deck lists here. The expanded Turbo Dark deck that did well at a a large tournament that someone had linked me to. I don't I don't even know what tournament it was because everything is so impossible to find in this game. Rawr, there be dragons indeed. It costs first place, current expansion six, second place, current expansion four, third and fourth place. Wow, that's really good. Hey, Ace. Hope you're having a good night. You just get back from F and M. Wow. Yeah, are there are they are they have more expensive ones as well or just that? I mean that's that's great. Like first place is six. Are those tradable packs or untradable? I'll probably, this will probably be the last one of these tournaments we play tonight then, so I can save my tickets for next weekend. In fact, maybe we will play some of these standard eight-mans-to-earn tickets. But, like, Hoopa's not free, and Hoopa, Hoopa being in that deck is a reason why this deck's a favorite against it, because of Salamance destroying them. While drinking. <laughs> Fair. I don't know how much later I'm going to be up here. I have to wake up early-ish tomorrow to drive to a Magic tournament in Chicago. I'll play a little bit more for sure keep doing expanded maybe we'll play some more expanded i guess i guess my regional that i'm going to be playing in march is expanded so yeah i guess i really don't want to play standard because i really want to play with the sun and moon cards because those are going to be out before i play my next standard tournament
Yep. Yeah, definitely. It's just, it's just a small, like, I guess it's not going to be small. They have 80 players pre-registered. They're capping at 90, but it's just like, it's a 1K. I'm just like going to have a good time. I've got this Esper control deck that's, I don't know if it's actually good or not, but it's kind of a gas to play. Like there's, there's, there's a special kind of magic about playing four cryptic command. If you've ever played magic with that card before, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Uh, it's just like magic in its purest form. That's the reason I played Scapeshift for so long is because you got to play four cryptic commands and not feel bad about it. A few more minutes here at most. Is there a full Sun and Moon spoiler somewhere someone can link me to? I wouldn't mind going over some of the uh, some of the cards in that that aren't in the client yet. And step exactly. And the the best are when you're like Snapcaster Mage, Target Cryptic Command, uh, Cryptic Command Counter. Cryptic Command, counter your spell, bounce my Snapcaster Mage. Just, like, use the Snapcaster Mage again the following turn. I always feel like the first time someone sees that, you can watch their head explode. Is there a full spoiler somewhere that doesn't require me to click on separate links to see every card? I can just like mouse over them and have them pop up possibly. Sorry if I'm being too complaining. I just like a scrolling page with all, is there like an MTG? Is there like a, a, a mythic spoiler for Pokemon basically? Yeah, I think my testing next week, we're going to do paper testing again next week for sure, because I'm playing regionals next weekend. We're going to test a whole bunch of Renegade Rallyer decks. I doubt it. That's annoying. On the Pokemon, did anyone have a link to that? I'm not apt at navigating those things. Next round of our tournament's beginning. All right, let's try and make it to the finals this time. Mono, mono blue, mono water, however you want to say it. Don't fail me now, Salamance. Don't fail me now. Oh, Salamance, why have you betrayed me, buddy? Why? I feel so betrayed. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Okay. This hand's medium. They're mulliganing. That's good. So they're either going to have to end us or marsh stomp. Okay. Whale Lord EX. It doesn't look like a Whale Lord deck. They had the like Evo Sodas and stuff, but I can see that being an okay guess to start. Another Max Elixir, okay. Double coin if heads your bone tech to Pokemon is now paralyzed, sure. Why is straight turbo dark better? All right, we're going to try and kill my opponent on the first turn here. So let's just discard this and this and get... Uh, how many Dark Energies are in my deck? Nine. So if I hit on one of these Max Elixirs, this Hydreon just wins the game. Why, why is Straight Turbo Dark better? All right, sweet. So the game is over. So I get to do this here, and then we get to Verse Seeker, this Olympia. 
Uh, then we get to Olympia back to here. I'm going to play this just in case I'm missing something here, but they should die here. They don't have any other Pokemon on their bench, so get shredded. So, opponent had a awkward, clunky start. You typed that before I drew the second elixir. But, I mean, like, so, for instance, um, you're talking about the the dragon energies being awkward in my hand there. Like, those just wouldn't be energies in the other deck. They'd just be other random cards, because my deck's playing more energies than the, than the non-dragons build. Actually, I have no idea what's happening. I won the game because my opponent either had a bad start or messed up and didn't put their basic out. One of those, one of those two things happened. Opponent's deck also probably wasn't very good. We're gonna pull up we're gonna pull up a spoiler here. Wow, basically just Belcher. Nah, my opponent's deck was bad. Let me add a web browser here to my thing.